So my segment today is to talk to you guys about how businesses transform their work processes through digitisation. My history within the telco and IT industry has been about 10 to 15 years, and I've certainly seen a lot of um, changes between some of the transformations that my business customers have made by going through the digital strategy. So I'd like to refer back to what we talked about earlier with Telstra, in specifically around the top area there where it says 89%. So 89% of Australian enterprises and small businesses across industries see the need to digitise to succeed and rank it among their top priorities. I think that's a huge number. So on that note, I'm lucky enough to have one of our customers with us today from Northern Territory. The company is HiQA Geotechnical. Basically what they do is they do geotechnical sampling um, through the mining sector, uh, defence sector and civil sectors amongst a few other things. They actually also won the NT Telstra Business of the Year Award this year and they're doing some amazing things through their growth through digitisation. So I have with us today the NT Operations Leader, Daniel Gaunt, who I'd like to invite up onto the stage so we can have a bit of a chat. So thanks so much for joining us, Dan. No worries. What I'd like to do is just open up the session just to talk a little bit about, I guess, what um, HiQA do and what your role is specifically. Okay, so HiQA Geotechnical is a um, construction materials testing company. We operate, like Hayley said, mining, civil construction, the oil and gas industry. Um, if someone builds something, we're essentially involved somewhere. We do all geomechanical testing for the building products all throughout the Territory um, and all throughout the north of Australia. We work everywhere from the Kimberleys to Darwin all the way to the Tanami Desert, everywhere. Excellent. And um, what exactly is your role within the business? Okay, I actually started eight and a half years ago as a lab manager. Um, now we've built and built and grown and grown, so now I'm the Northern Territory Operations Leader. So my role is just to make sure that the operations within the Northern Territory are running efficient. Yeah, I think you do a very good job of that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so let's take a bit of a step back in terms of your technology and what it used to be, let's say, five, six years ago when you first started. What did that look like? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> look, we, we operate an industry that's quite traditionally considered to be quite non-innovative and very traditional. So 10, 8 years ago, we were still receiving faxes from clients when they were out in the middle of the desert. So we've come a long way. Essentially, we started as one laboratory in a place called Catherine. It's about three hours north of Darwin. Um, and now, then we grew to three laboratories when I came on board. And we essentially operated as three individual silos. And we had one computer each and emails. That was about it, and telephones. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we started. And then we outgrew that. And we kept growing and growing and growing. And yeah, so we this. And then we got to where we are today. So, so, what, um, so what, what was the solution that you found for those pain points, obviously, as operating as, I guess, as you say, silos? Mm. What was the, the way of solving all that, addressing that tra uh, pain point from a technology perspective? Yeah, we made a lot of mistakes along the way. We, <laughs> as I said, we started with like three individual computers and yep. email, and then we progressed to like hard drives, and then we tried Dropbox. And at some point, we kind of grew out of all that, and then we had to come up with a better solution. So ultimately, about four years ago, we moved to a remote desktop environment in the cloud. And that kind of just brought every, all the three labs and all of our locations into the one place so we could start working together as a team, not just three individual silos. Yeah, absolutely. And um, did you have any challenges from a change management point of view? I imagine <laughs> coming from yes. that sort of legacy <coughs> infrastructure, <laughs> there have been oh. some challenges along the way? Yes. <laughs> Not only are we in a traditional industry, but everyone that works in the industry is quite traditional in their thinking. Yeah. Everything we do is quite prescriptive, and everyone's been doing it this way for a long time. In, um, my, my old man actually started a soil testing apprenticeship in 1985, and I still do things today that he was taught back then, so the innovation side of things. So the hardest thing about all of it is actually bringing your team along. And that change management was quite hard, changing people's thought process, because it's, you know, it's in their DNA to think a certain way. So you've got to teach them how to be innovative and teach them how to think a different way, to solve problems in a different way mm. than what we have for 25, 35 years. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so obviously we've talked a little bit about the past and then what we, we addressed to, to solve that. So what do you think the future looks like in terms of your technology strategy? Yeah. We've actually got to the same kind of pain point again. We've kind of got to the point where the remote desktop environment, we've hit the cap of that ability and how that functions within our company. We've actually brought on two new laboratories, so now we're 
ultimately in five locations. So now we need to move to the next stage. So for us, that looks like better integration into things like SharePoint um, and I guess Microsoft 365 in that environment. That for us is going to develop our ability to be able to integrate all throughout what we do in every part of the business. And ultimately what it will do, as what it did four years ago when we get, we'll be able to then redefine all of our internal business processes and figure out which ones we can improve and do that through software solutions. I imagine you learned a little bit from Phil's presentation yeah, like I did. I did. <laughs> I did actually, I didn't realise how many software packages you guys have. <laughs> we'll have to talk uh, further about yeah. those later. <laughs> yeah. No, the, yeah, there's a lot going on. I, I guess for us it's all about greater integration. Like I said, we have technicians operating in the middle of the Tanami Desert over satellite, te you know, satellite technology to operating in big cities. So, you know, for us it's, it's a challenge and we need to innovate and move to the next step and we need our technology to grow with it. Absolutely, because you have gone through a huge growth spurt realistically in the last five years. Was it sort of five to eight yeah. staff up to about 40? Today? Look, we started, when we initially started thinking about software as something to solve solutions, we were about 10 full-time employees. Now we're about 45. Yeah, so, it's amazing. Yeah, it's quite a bit of growth over that time. Yeah, good work. Now, one of the things that we've um, briefly spoken about uh, just recently is um, the Power BI um, part of the Office 365 suite. And um, I know that you're very excited about some of the mm. ways that that can actually assist you with obviously using that data and actually seeing, you know, dashboarding as to the health of your business or integration into your finance packages, etc. Do you, how else do you think that that's going to strengthen your business? One of the things I've learned is it's great to capture a lot of data. We actually capture a lot of data sets nowadays, but it doesn't really mean anything unless you can actually interpret that data. It doesn't mean anything unless you can present it either in, to internal clients or external clients in a way that they can understand and they can implement into their business. So we capture a lot of data within our company that can help our clients be more efficient and innovative in how they deliver civil construction projects. At the moment, it's very difficult for us to deliver that data and that data set. So I get, for us, we're now thinking about ways of how we can deliver this data to our clients and add value to what our currently we say is our value proposition. So. One of our mission at Hikwa is to be the preferred choice, so we want to be the leaders. So for us, we've been looking into something recently called Power BI. I didn't realise there was about 10,000 other products <laughs> in the power. <laughs> um, but, but that's actually quite innovative, the, the, the ability to be able to pull data from 15 different places all into the one actively. That's one thing that we struggle with at the moment. It takes us a month to push out you know, reports to clients. We need to really compress that. So yeah. Yeah. For me, Power BI is part of that process. Yeah, spot on. And as you said, there's lots more to come, I think, too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, that's awesome. It was interesting, um, when I caught up with Dan a few weeks ago to prepare for today, we had a bit of a chat about start of, starting off with the Telstra Business Awards and how Heiko won it. And initially, Dan said, I actually don't, you know, I'm not entirely sure. I think I've got a bit of an idea. We spent a couple of hours and lots of coffees talking about where Haiku has come from and where it is today and where it's heading. And we both looked at each other at the end and said, well, I think we now know why we won the award this year. Mm. <laughs> So very well done. No worries, thank you. Thank you so much for being here, Dan. No worries. And thanks, everybody.